Heldy, in the last video, we talked about the electron sources. In this video, we'll talk about the lenses and apertures in TEM. When we think about lenses, lenses basically do two things. The first thing is to take all the rays coming from a point in an object and recreate a point in the image. The second thing is uh, the lens can focus parallel rays to a point in the focal plane of the lens. In optical microscopes, we use glass lenses to bend light. Glass lenses cannot bend electron beam, so inside TEM, we use electromagnetic lenses to manipulate the path of electrons. The photograph on the left shows one example of the electromagnetic lens. The image on the right shows the schematic cross-section view of the electromagnetic lens. In the electromagnetic lens, you have copper wires going around. By passing through a current in the copper wires, you will create magnetic field. The field close to the center is called the main magnetic field. The ones close to the edge of the lens is called the fringe magnetic field. The main magnetic field and the fringe magnetic field, they work together to guide the path of the electron beam. There's one thing you need to know regarding the electron path inside TEM as well as in SEM. The electron beam does not go straight down from the electron source through the column. It actually rotates. It goes in a spiral. The result is that when we change the magnification inside TEM, the image actually rotates. This is because we are capturing different parts of the spiral as we change the magnification. There is a special term to describe this phenomenon called the magnetic rotation. In contrast, the light path in the optical microscope is much simpler. Uh, there's no rotation. Moving from lenses to apertures, apertures are much easier. These are just small holes in diaphragms. The aim of having aperture is to limit the angular spread of electrons entering the lens. In the example here, the electrons with scattering semi-angle less than beta will go through the lens, but the electrons with scattering semi-angle greater than beta will be blocked by the aperture. The concept of the scattering semi-angle beta is very important. You will realize its importance when we revisit the resolution of TEM in the next video. On the right are the photographs of uh, apertures people use in TEM. In the example down the bottom, you see a number of apertures on the single strip. With the basic understanding of lenses and apertures, we can start putting them in the hand-drawn schematic of the TEM. This is what we had from the previous video. We start with the condenser lens and condenser aperture. This will give us the condenser system. By changing the strength of the condenser lenses, you can converge or diverge the electron beam. In other words, you can change the convergence semi-angle of the electron beam. After the condenser lens system, we have the objective lens and objective aperture. This gives us the objective lens system. By changing the strength of the objective lens, you can make the image in focus or out of focus. Finally, we have the intermediate lenses and the selected area aperture or the SA aperture they make up the projector lens system. By changing the strength of the intermediate lenses, you can either change the magnification of your image or change the camera length of the diffraction pattern. Please bear in mind that no lens system is perfect. In the next video, we'll discuss the imperfections in lenses.